338 counting bits. Uh, given a non-negative integer number num, uh, for every numbers i in the range 0, uh, where i is less than or equal to, or uh, i is between 0 and num, calculate the number of ones in their binary representation and return them as an array. OK. Wow. <clears throat> What is nums? Yeah, I mean, so the first of all, I mean, yeah, your first instinct is just the very naive one of going over the for loop. Uh, but can you do in linear time? The size of the integer. Oh, I guess that's just like 64 by going through it. Um, space complexity should be of n. I mean, that. What is n in this case? I guess just a number? Uh, just probably here. Wow. Uh, I think my what I'm trying to do now is just make sure I understand the problems correctly because some because <clears throat> this seems like one of those problems where like you know you could do it naively or something like that or like straightforward but they don't want you to use any library function or whatever so you have to do certain things manually quote unquote. Uh, and that kind of changes what you want to, how you want to solve the problem, right? Uh, so okay, let me read this a little carefully. Uh, oh, so I'm zero to i, so. Oh, sorry, from zero to num, so. Uh, hmm. I mean, <clears throat> you could probably do it recursively where. Uh, where the number of bits is, uh, yeah, because I think, so, so how I would break it down is that, let's say num, you know, you have some, because uh, uh, there's an answer for every bit that's in uh, num, so basically, for example, if num is, say, I don't know, 14, uh, that's just, you go to a plus uh, 4 plus 2, right? Uh, and and that is just basically the at so f of fourteen is equal to f of a plus f of four plus f of two, and I did not choose these numbers arbitrarily. In that you know f of eight is you know the third power of two, and four is the second power of two, and so forth. Um, so so then the question becomes. Uh, and you could do this in the number of bits, where like so, fourteen. You could do in like a four loop of four bits or whatever. Um, so then the the question becomes, uh, given an, a power of two, what is the number of uh, number of ones in the binary representation, right? Uh, okay, I mean, I'm bringing up where. Uh, I'm just going to, without trying to. Figure out mathematically. I, I always, some, well, not always. Like I some, I always sometimes. <laughs> uh, I sometimes like to visualize it. So let's say for f of two, uh, you have just zero one and one zero. So your answer is just, you know, which is in the input. Uh, oh wait, oh, maybe I misread this. Actually, hang on. Well, I think this is still true. This this type of occurrence. But uh, f of two. Hmm. Number of ones. Uh, what is this answer? Oh, uh, this. Yeah. Okay. No. No. I, I was right the first time. I think they could have added like a couple, like one more line to kind of. Explain this example is just, which is how I initially expect it. But yeah, f of uh, f of two is just uh, yeah, in this case, just that because this one, um, because it's just you know one and two, which is one and ten in binary. Uh, let's see, now f of four would just be one ten. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on this, but yeah, so that, right? And that is equal to 2, 2, 1. 
Does that generalize? Uh, okay. Maybe having this like horizontal is also a little makes it slightly harder to for me to visualize. But if you have A, then you have something like that. Slow three digits. I guess it's actually more than three digits, but it doesn't count. I, I, I don't count the last one. Uh, yeah, yeah, this same, same, same. But uh, in this case, there's four in each one, which makes sense, right? Because half the bits and half of time. So, so this in this case means uh, four, 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 and then a one for the for the one thousand, right? Now, okay, just also trying to make sure that I get this right, because I think maybe th this recurrence is roughly right, maybe. And I want to make sure that I, uh, well, I mean, how, I, uh, how I'm counting it is definitely right, but I, but I want to make sure that uh, how I'm decomposing it is right. Because maybe I'm off by one actually, but hmm. uh, so so what's nine? Right? Nine would just be all this, but plus one, which is obvious. So that's just okay. And you have 15, which should be, oh, sorry, 14. Uh, you're saying it's true, then you have this chunk plus, plus 4. So you add that plus 2, which is just 1, 1. So in theory, we, if this is right, then we got 7, 7, 5, 1. Is that right? And I'm going to do a quick cheat. <laughs> uh, I could work it out myself, but I'm just a little lazy. Uh, hmm. But maybe I misunderstand this. Why is this? Why does this have 14 digits? Oh, wait. I think I've just misread all this form, so maybe, you know, please ignore me then. Uh, hmm. I was solving a different problem. I, yeah. I have reading comprehension issues. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I mean, in this case, I, I think I, it's a good thing I tested because I actually I didn't look at the number five examples closely enough. I would have gotten it right. I was solving a different problem. So please ignore everything I said. <laughs> uh, but I think in general, then you just have. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know, understand why this is, I, I think one thing I'm trying to figure out a little bit is why is this a dynamic programming problem? But, but yeah, um, yeah, why is this a dynamic, hmm, let me think for a second longer. So basically, you just have to return literally the number of ones in their binary representation, uh, which I guess uh, uh, in that sense, there's some uh, um, there's a pattern. Uh, do I know what it's supposed to be? Uh, also, high poster rat. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that so there's definitely you could do it like the quote unquote brute force way, uh, where you you know for each number you you uh, just want a loop to count the number of bits, which is very trivial. Uh, but, um, but I think I'm trying to be, I don't know if I'm trying to be too clever because I don't know what the problem is necessarily asking for. Uh, but, but I think, so I think one thing to note is that, um, so the number of ones in their binary representation will, will go something like one. Uh, so for f of one, it's just one. And then, but also for every power of two, right? 
i is equal to one, right? I think that's fair. Uh, and then. And then is there a recurrence that I could do? Hmm. Let's, let's say it's 15. Then it's just that plus. Yeah, actually, I mean, I, I think what I said earlier is still kind of true in a weird way, but then f of 15 is just minus or is equal to f of 8, which is 1 plus f of 7. Right, and f of seven should be three, so you just kind of decompose it that way. And that way, I guess it's dynamic programming, but it's just. I mean, the, my awkwardness with this problem is that it's just a little bit uh, constructed in a weird way. But I think that's probably right. Uh, so, um, so I think we can solve it that way. Um, so basically, um, you take the biggest power of two. And then you subtract it, and you always have the biggest power of two. That's because you already done it, right? So, I think that should be right. I don't know if I'm saying it right. So, if, please keep asking questions if I am. I may be hand waving a little bit, but hey, a cool guy, ninety three. Good, good to see you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I think the answer is that, like, for example, f of fifteen is equal to f of a plus f of four plus f of Two plus f of one, right? Which is obvious. I mean, this is obvious in the sense that this is just a binary decomposition. But but what actually happens is that you already have uh, so f of this is just one plus f of seven, which and this we already calculated, right? So so I think what you want is just uh, uh, this plus the remainder, and that should give you so like for fourteen, it's just f of six. So it's just uh, the number minus the biggest power of two that is smaller than that number, and then you do it that way. It's a little awkward though, but uh, let me let me see if I could crank something out and then. Uh, oh. Oh. This actually may include a little bit. Uh, And it's a power of two, uh, so I think I sh I've done this trick before uh, on stream, but uh, you can prove to yourself a little bit why this is true. But it's a little kind of old school hack. And it's, I'll just leave a comment there. Uh, then, yeah, some append one. Else, uh, we sums is a pen one plus sums of some number that's uh, yeah, we get the most significant bit. Uh, hmm. What's a good way to get the most significant bit? Oh, I guess what we should do is just keep track. Uh, last power of two equals, in this case, it's zero. That's my, I was thinking about it earlier while I was typing, but then I just forgot it. Uh, and something like that. I guess this is actually should be three. In that case, I don't need to do this fancy thing. I mean, I still can, but just to make it clear. Mm, this is like one ahead, so, um, so everything's off by a power of two. 
Um, yeah, I guess I have to add it to a here or over here. So yeah, I'll type my. Let me just do this here for now, and then just to see if it's right. Hmm, so by a little bit, not by one somewhere. Okay. Um, Yeah. Oops. Uh Wow, that is easy. Uh that work. Hmm. Well, I mean I yeah, so, so I'm, I'm just reading what, what a, a cool guy 93 said, uh, and I'm just trying to think about that recurrence. So I got something right now. So let me, uh, seems like I mine is kind of right anyway, but let me submit it and then let me think about it afterwards. Okay, cool. So that does work. Um, uh, now let's look at, so a cool guy 93 suggests that D, uh, dp of i is equal to dpi less than, uh, over 2 plus uh, the parity of i. Uh, does that work? Uh, and I, I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> this, these things I'm always, I don't know, that's why I'm practicing, I guess. But let's say you have 15, it goes to 7 plus 1. Hmm. Okay, you pick that. Yeah, I guess so, you're right. Huh. No, I mean, I think... I, I guess essentially we're doing the same thing, except for that I take the uh, I take the I basically subtract the, the the bit that's in front and you just subtract the bit that's at the end and, and but shift over. So yeah, I mean I, I think for me uh yours is definitely right. Uh just that it takes me an extra second to think about why that's right. Uh because yeah, because you're shifting kinda uh uh, uh digits around. But yeah, no, I mean, you're definitely right. I mean, I think we're literally doing the same thing except for using different bits. And I, I guess in some, in some, uh, you know, on some way, like it doesn't matter what the number is. So for me, like, I guess it did, for me, it was an invariant, but it didn't need to be an invariant. Uh, but, but yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, <laughs> huh, that's a good kind of, uh, yeah, I have to think about it. Yeah, I think maybe I'll just think a little bit offline about why that is the case and kind of uh, try to figure out, like, like I think for me the the what I would like to see if I could learn is that like how where you know where else does this apply and and then I could kind of like use it in the future, right? Like, uh, I mean, it's good that we solve this problem and hopefully it's not just one off and you know if I've seen this before or whatever. Though most of the time I spend on this problem is because I misread the problem or something. I I think I confused it for a similar looking problem. Um, but yeah, but in terms of, uh, hmm. I, for an interview problem, I think this is, like in terms of difficulty, I think pretty okay. I think um, it's a little, it does play around a little bit with kind of the binary rep rep uh, representation of stuff, which I guess is important enough in computer science, I don't know, like it's still a little mathy, but uh, sometimes. Um, but but in terms of difficulty, it's probably reasonable. Uh, it's a little bit short on the coding, so I think I don't know if I would like that that much. But I say that about that a lot about dynamic program problems in general because a lot of them, once you get the recurrence, we, you could get in five lines of code or maybe a little bit longer. But like you know, uh, for the more mathematical ones, uh, so I think I always try to stay away from that uh, just so that um, so because my philosophy on that is that. Um, 
if someone cannot sell things in a uh, dynamic programming way, because I don't know, sometimes people just have tough days or whatever, or just, you know, uh, it's not their forte or whatever, uh, then at least like, if, if they do this exhaustively or something like that and do it like really brute force, uh, at least I could kind of see how they think and how they approach the problem, how would they code the problem, how do they, you know, have code quality and maybe in a good way that mix up for a little bit. Uh, and then other parts of the interview, not just like my my section, that maybe could kind of balance it out. Um, and diamond formula problems are a little hard to do that. Uh, Ace is a kind of basis. Uh, I mean, it's a cute little problem. It's a problem solver for sure. And definitely um, there are, you know, at least two different ways to do it. Uh, uh, but it is a little kind of, I don't know. I think I like stuff just a little bit more straightforward in the in the question um, and kind of things that we could explore. Uh, my, my dream question is one that you can solve like three or four different ways and then we could kind of uh, talk about, you know, the merits or and how to like and how to break down, you know, the trade-offs and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's okay. Uh, I think if I was a, an interviewer and I look, and I asked this question, uh, my I would worry that um, I just don't know how to kind of analyze this because this is, you know, if you get it right, I, I, I've learned that, you know, you could get this problem right, but I don't know if I could learn anything more for, about you as a candidate because uh, it's just like eight lines of code. And I mean, yeah, this particular code, like I could ch clean up a little bit, but, you know, not, you know, how much can you clean up eight lines of code in general, right? So, yeah.